you mentioned Jim Cornette there. Uh, from my perspective, uh, people like Jim Cornette and Dave Meltzer, or uh, they they claim to be critics, but to me they're more a case of uh, attention seekers. Well, you, you know, a lot of their criticism is real or just yeah. uh, attempts at clickbait. Let me ask you this, and 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 I, and I know Meltzer a little bit, and I know him to be an okay guy. Here, here's where my problem with Meltzer come in at. When Jimmy would get mad at OVW and take his ball and go home, or if WWE would fire him, Jimmy would all of a sudden hate OVW. Whenever and, and Meltzer used to write the most glorious reviews of OVW, what a great show we were. We're better than Raw and SmackDown. He'd give out his awards. Many times we beat Raw and SmackDown in the award ceremonies, and Jimmy was so proud. But all of a sudden, Jimmy gets mad, takes his ball, and goes home once. And I think he got fired another time or two for, through WWE. And then all of a sudden, Jimmy gets mad. He even wants me to quit OVW. And I said, well, no, I like it here. And that keeps me on television. It keeps me making money. As long as I'm on TV, I'm a celebrity in this town and I can keep selling shit. Well, I was a little bit wrong about that because I haven't been on TV in about six years now. And I still sell a lot of shit. <laughs> so, but then again, my podcast weren't as hot uh, back then as they are now. And because not only do I do my own on YouTube and plus we just expanded to iTunes and Stitcher and all that stuff. And in the next several days and weeks, we will expand to all these other podcast sources. I've been living just on YouTube alone, which is not wise because a lot of people don't want to watch a podcast on YouTube. So now they're going to have an option each way. I'm one of the few in the world that does a live podcast. Do, do you do live shows? Uh, no, because uh, I tend to drink a lot. And sometimes I uh... get out of here. What an own <laughs> drunk now. <laughs> <laughs> but here's the thing. I I'm one of the few podcasts I've been around the 16th season starting in January. We do two live different podcasts. We do Facebook live. We do two of those a month guaranteed. And I do four YouTube shows live. So I'm doing six live shows. No one else is doing that. We take questions. It's totally, there's no script, no nothing. I sit down at a microphone and the audience controls the show. And if I'm not doing one of those type of shows, then if this show sucks, it's your fault because you're asking the questions. Now I have to deliver. <laughs> so I take some uh, play in this, but I'm only as good as the host is because the host has to keep the show going, ask the good questions, ask shit that I haven't answered a thousand times. Mm -hmm. And that's hard to do because I've done a lot of damn. I mean, people were trying to give me shit over claiming I had a billion podcast downloads. Over, over as long as I've been doing these 16, you know, well, shit, probably 15, 16 years. I've been doing podcasts of one form or another hotline interviews. Hotlines was a form of podcasting. Hell, I started doing those in 95. How long is that? Now, that's 23 years that I've been doing those type of interviews. How many fucking stories can you tell and find different ways to do them? Well, somehow I've been able to do it. We don't have too many shows out there that are just like the other one we did. And unfortunately, one of my criticisms of Jim Cornette is that once you've heard two or three of his shows, if, if it, if me and him aren't on it going back and forth at each other, it's, uh, he bitches about religion, politics and current events in his hometown and, and how much the stock market's fucking him over and how much work he needs to do on his house. Well, how many times can you tell that story? But the cult of Cornette, for whatever reason, I love it. It's, it's kind of like Donald Trump's base. He can do no wrong to a certain group of people. And uh, congratulations for that. I, I wish I had as many that were as dedicated to me as that are dedicated to him. But I think I have one of the better podcasts going because we do talk about religion a little bit. We talk about politics a little bit. We talk about wrestling a little bit. But it's not it's not a wrestling podcast. People get well, I tuned in here to watch wrestling. I want to hear wrestling questions. Well, ask one, motherfucker. Because the only way we talk about wrestling is if you ask a wrestling question. Otherwise, we go in different directions. <clears throat> and number two, YouTube don't want to pay you shit if you're a wrestling podcast. If it's wrestling, they want to pay you dick. And advertisers don't really want to be a part of it. So I am an entertainer. I've always been an entertainer since the day I could talk into a microphone. So that's, that's what we do. We entertain.